has come. Do you understand what this people, what these people is telling us? This is why the masters come to Egypt. Not Canaan, not Mecca, not Morocco. Why he left this out when he was doing all his plagiarizing? Why did he leave this information out? Let's deal with chapter 48. Jesus receives from the Hierophant his mystic name and number, passes the first brotherhood test, and receives his first degree, sincerity. Let me start at the verse number two. The circle is the symbol of the perfect man, and seven is the number of the perfect man. The logos is the perfect word, that which creates, that which destroys, that which saves. The Hebrew master is the logos of the Holy One, the circle of the human race, the seven of time. And in the rec and in the record book, the scribe wrote down the logos circle seven, and thus Jesus was known. This is where they get the circle seven. This is where they get the circle seven. Up out of the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. He was a mas mas mason of the Masonic order. He was dealing with the mystical, metaphysical, mystical, magical. And you don't want to tell the truth. Go to more science, false teachings, part four, as I drop even heavier knowledge on this brother y'all call Noble Drew Ali. Let's, let's deal with the master teachers on this issue. Let's deal with the master teachers. Let's bring in the, the grand master teacher, George G.M. James. Let's bring in the, the, the author of The Stolen Legacy. What does he say about the Moors? He says, during the Persian, Greek, and Roman invasion, large numbers of Egyptians fled not only to the desert and mountain regions, but also to adjacent lands in Africa, Arabia, and Asia Minor, where they live, and secretly developed the teachings which belong to their mystery system. In the 8th century A.D., in the 8th century A.D., as I said earlier in the videos, there was no mores of consequence doing anything in Africa until the coming of Islam. In the 8th century A.D., the Moors, natives of Mauritania in North Africa, invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture which they had preserved. Knowledge in the ancient days was uh, centralized. It belonged to a common parent and system, i.e. the wisdom teachings of the mysteries of Egypt. It's the parent. You can't equate the Moors with Egypt. Egypt is the parent. It preceded the Moors. So you can't say that the Egyptians were Moors. They were not Moors. Because no one was using that word in reference to African Ethiopian people before the 8th century A.D. You find me the writings. You find me the writings where they speak of it. Let's go to the Grand Master, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan, who not only got a Ph.D., in Moore's history from Barcelona, Spain, but also taught at Al Azhar University in Cairo, the citadel of Islamic learning on the planet, but a, a cornerstone Mo with nothing but a card in his back pocket, going to try to challenge master teachers that have been all over the world, then done and done research on original texts. Not no little ass pamphlet, but the original text. Let's deal with uh, the Grand Master Teacher, Yosef Ben Yakanai, got to say. He says, the Ghana Empire was established between 50 BCE, 100 CE. The exact time is debated daily. But what I want to get up out of this, it says, Ghana was destroyed by Africans called Almoravids around 176 of the common era. The Almoravids were Moors. Understand that. 
that when they got pushed up out of Spain, they came down into Africa and began to in attack the indigenous African cultures that were established there. It is the Moors that destroyed Ghana in 176 of the Common Era. Let's go down to number three. Song Hei. The invasion from Mauritania started, wait a minute, let me go up some. The empire was destroyed in calculated 1592 of the common era by Africans called Moors from the north. The invasion from Mauritania started in 1582 of the common era at the end of Emperor Askia Ashaka II's reign. It lasted for 10 long, bitter years of warfare. So there it is from the Grand Master Yosef Ben Yakanan. The Moors sacked Ghana and Song Hay. This show you that they were nothing but the middle aged Janja Weed. They were attacking indigenous African civilizations. And these niggas gonna sit up here talking about Morocco is your nationality. Why? Because you destroying all the other damn nations? There were other nations in Africa besides Morocco. So why you keep saying that Moroccan is our nationality? You got nations like Ghana. They're not Moors. They're Ghanaians. You had the Empire of Sanghe, Mali, Benin. You got all of these uh, nations on the west coast of Africa. They're not Moors. Let's deal with the grand master teacher, Dr. John Henry Clark, Colum Christopher Columbus in the African Holocaust. After the death of Askia the Great in 1528, the Songhai Empire began to lose its strength and its control over its vast territory. When the Songhai Empire collapsed after the capture of Timbuktu and Gayo by the Moroccans in 1591, the whole of the Western Sudan was devastated by the invading troops. Devastated by the invading troops. Who did it? The Moroccans. What year? 1591. Let's move on. European firearms across the Sahara to attack the once powerful empire of Songhai. The, the army did not reach Timbuktu until 1591. The, proper, the prosperous city of Timbuktu was plundered by the army of freebooters. A state of anarchy prevailed. The University of Sankare, which had stood for over 500 years, was destroyed and the facility exiled to Morocco. Who destroyed Timbuktu? Who destroyed the University of Sankare? The, the Moors. What year? 1591. Let's move on. In one of a uh, number of holy wars or jihads, Ghana was invaded by the um, Almoravids under the leadership of Abu Bakr of the Soso Empire in 1076 AD. The conquest brought an end to Ghana's age of prosperity and cultural development. The character of the country was slow to change. Who destroyed Ghana? The Moors. In what year? 1076 AD. Let's move on. Then when the Arabs and Moors were expelled from Spain, they returned to Africa after being the masters of the Mediterranean for 750 years. They had no sentimental attachment to Africa, they began to prey on nations south of the Sahara, principally the old empire of Sarkhe, from the Grand Master Dr. John Henry Clark. So now we didn't heard from George G.M. James, Dr. Joseph Ben Yakinai, Dr. John Henry Clark. Now let's move into Ivan Van Sertima, the golden age of the Moor. And in there, we gonna deal with Literature from John G. Jackson. The Moors were people who lived in Morocco. That's the reason why, the reason they called it that. The word Moor means black. It means black. And these niggas talk about that black means death. 
But yet and still, the word more itself means black. It meant black people. In ancient times, all Af Africans were called Ethiopians or Kushites. In ancient times, all Africans were called Ethiopians or Kushites. And in the Middle Ages, the Africans were called Moors. In the Middle Ages, the Africans were called Moors. And the word more literally means black. So the Moorish people were the black people. In medieval times, the name Moor was not restricted to the inhabitants of Morocco, but it was customary to refer to all Africans as Moors. Now this is from John G. Jackson. He clearly lets you know that the word Moor means black, and it was used during the Middle Ages. It wasn't nothing but another word that the cracker used that meant nigger. That's all it was. It is a middle age word for nigger. It means black. Let's go on. This is from Renoko Rashidi. The Moors, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, are people who are commonly supposed to be black or very dark, and it is synonymous with the word negro in many contexts. Rashidi and Brunson provides numerous examples of the synonymy of Moors with black during the European Renaissance and early. The word runs like a ripple across a vast pool of languages. The Oxford English Dictionary. Rashidi and Brunson. Renoko Rashidi says the word is synonymous with black during the European Renaissance. The Middle Ages, and the world runs like a ripple across a vast pool of languages. So now we've heard from George G.M. James, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Ivan Van Sertima, and Renoko Rashidi. All of them grandmaster teachers, and a cornerstone mo with nothing but a damn card in his back pocket can't say shit but assalamu alaikum or whatever he can say will try to go up against these grandmaster teachers. How can you know more than these brothers know and they done been all the way to goddamn Europe then read the original text and your arrogant, ignorant ass will sit up here and debate grandmaster teachers. Go to more science, false teachings, part five. Okay, family, let's deal with the Moors' involvement in our slavery, in our Holocaust. Why is it that these Moors in the Moor Science Temple want to say that slavery didn't happen? Nigga talking about 300,000 slaves came to America. Why is it that these niggas will steal the memory of our ancestors and they holocaust? You got to ask yourself that very, very serious question that they could take 200 million and dwindle, dwindle it down to 300,000 when the documentation and the memory of that Holocaust is on both sides of the ocean in North Central America, South America, the islands and the continent of Africa and Europe, all that documentation on the Holocaust of African people, all the slave forts, in Africa, and these niggas will come out against our ancestors and say that it did not happen. You gonna let them steal your ancestors' memories like that? Man, you got to call them niggas out. Why would they take a stance like that? Because they was floating them damn boats for them crackers. They was contracting them moors out to float them damn boats. Let's deal with the references. Africa, mother of Western civilization, by Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan, who I must say again has a PhD in Moore's history from Barcelona, Spain, also was a professor at Al Azhar University in Cairo, the citadel of all Islamic learning. Let's deal with the middle of this paragraph. The African Moors, the first to enter Spain in 711 of the Common Era, when, were in fact the last to leave in 1485 of the Common Era. 
which was only seven short years before an African Moor named Petro Alonso Nino became captain of the flagship Santa Maria, which was the lead ship of the expedition that Cristobal Colon commanded as admiral. The African Moor named Pietro Alonso Nino, the Moor, who became captain of the flagship Santa Maria. When that cracker, low down wicked beast, Cristobal Colon was on his genocidal rampage, you have Moors that were captain of the ship. Why, why do you think these niggas brag about the fact they were signing treaties with these crackers at the same time our people was in slavery. Ask yourself that question. That's a very serious question that why would they brag about signing treaties with our oppressor, with our murderers? You understand with the, the, the cracker that's raping our women, our mothers and our, uh, our, fo you know, our foremothers and our sisters. And our babies, the same cracker that's raping our women, our babies, and the men, they signing treaties with them. Let's go even further. Let's deal with these two crackers, Mussolini and Leopold of Belgium. Each one of them came in Africa. Mussolini went to Ethiopia, dropped gas all on the Ethiopians killed over a half a million of our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia. Leopold depopulated the Congo by 30 million. That's a documented fact. Even the crackers will document that. So why is these niggas talking about 300,000? Any which way it go. And when you deal with the Arabs, how many they murdered, how many the cracker murdered, the number is 200 million. No less than that. When these crackers came in, and the Uncle Tom niggas that were on their side, you know how you can distinguish them Uncle Tom niggas? They were the feds. You see they cracker captain, and you see the niggas right beside them wearing that damn feds. If you got the documentary, The Congo, look on the front of that uh, documentary documentary the Congo about Leopold of Belgium and you'll see the two niggas with the fezes on there with our brothers in the middle while the cracker was shooting them down. You understand what I'm saying? Look at this low life the nigga with a fez on with the crackers uh like he from got the British kilt on. This is these is when you can recognize the British, the French, the English, all of them uh African Uncle Tom's they wore the feds. Here they is. Here they is. These is the army for the crackers. Wearing the feds. When, the, uh, when, when Mussolini came into Africa, the Somalians and the Etrians, if you get the documentary, War in Zion, get that documentary, it's live footage. You will see that the Somalians and the Etrians who work with M Mussolini right here wore the feds. Look at this. The British colonial empire, our allies, the colonies, our allies, the nigga with the fans on. Every time we were attacked by the cracker, the niggas that worked with the crackers wore fezes. Here they is. Here they is. Here's the crackers, the niggas that worked with the crackers wearing the fans. We didn't tell these niggas to go put them hats on. You could have did this research. You could have distinguished yourself between our enemies, but you did not. You went and put their damn hats on your goddamn head, and then you put it on us. Say, we wrong. No, nigga, you wrong. We got the documented fact. Every time an old Uncle Tom nigga worked with them peck of woods, he wrote affairs. Now, let's deal with this, that we was over here in America, that it, there was a civilization that existed in America the same height as Egypt, same type of technology as Egypt. Let's deal with this knowledge that been dropped on us. Scientists, oldest American skull file. How old is it? 13,000 years ago. 13,000 years ago. That's as far back as they have been able to go over here. They have not been able to go earlier than 13,000 years ago. 
BCE, before the Common Era. Let's look at the oldest New World writing file. Ancient civilizations in Mexico developed a writing system as early as 900 BC. New evidence suggests. 900 BC. Let's go into Africa. Let's look at the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The, papy the Papyrus of Annie. And when it was written. In this introduction, the term is intended to include the general body of text which have reference to the burial of the dead and to the new life in, in the world beyond the grave, and which are known to have existed in revised editions and to have been in use among the Egyptians from about B.C. 4500 to the early centuries of the Christian era. 4500! That's over three millennium that Africans was producing literature before they was producing it in the Americas. Let's deal with this in the New York Times. 43,000 year old mine. Iron ore mine. Found in Swaziland, South Africa. 43,000 years ago, we were smelting iron. Do you know how goddamn hot you have to get a damn furnace to smelt iron? And you niggas is talking about uh, what was over here in the Americas? When you drop down in Egypt, the first thing you see is the pyramids climbing in the sky. You ain't got to have nobody talk you into that. Because the evidence is overwhelming. You have stolen our history. You have stolen our ancestors' holocaust. You have hidden the fact that you floated them boats with them crackers. You hid the fact that you destroyed Ghana, that you destroyed Sung Hay, and you was the mid-ages uh, judge weed committing genocide on our people. You just devastated West Africa to the point where our people could not fight that cracker when he came in. You are responsible, more. You, when they say that Africans sold Africans, they should have been very clear that those Africans were Moors. And that is documented fact. I give praise to John G. Jackson, one of our Grandmaster Scholars, whom I got knowledge from to help do this video. George G. M. James, who wrote The Stolen Legacy, who was murdered for his knowledge. I want to give praise and respects to Dr. John Henry Clark, who I got knowledge from, who helped me do these videos. Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan, who I give high praise to, to, that helped me do these videos. Dr. Renoko Rashidi, who helped me to, who I got knowledge from to do these videos. And the Grandmaster Teacher, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima. Now, if you know Cornerstone Moles, Think you can go up against all them grandmaster teachers and they wrong and you right that shows the ignorance of your ar arrogance. Arm yourself with knowledge, bang on that beast daily, liberation through education. Peace. Here's live footage from the Ethiopian Italian War where Mussolini come down into Ethiopia to commit genocide on our people, killing over a half a million of our people, and the low life the nigger traitor that worked right along with Mussolini, you can easily identify him with the feds. You see him right there with the tassels. You see him right there with the crackers armament. While our brothers and sisters only had uh, spears and, uh, you know, not highly mechanized artillery and these niggas know that is shooting highly mechanized armaments at their own brothers and sisters a part of the genocidal mass murder of our people in Ethiopia when Mussolini was dropping gas down upon our people chemical and biological warfare Dropping it down on top of our people, these niggas were side by side with the Peckerwood Italians committing that genocide. 
So I'm not going to chitter chat. I'm going to give you the, this is actual footage. This is not a, a movie. This is actual footage of these traitorous niggas with the fairs on their head working right side by side with Mussolini. Now, if you African Senate and you say you about your people, you got to ask serious questions. Why would they have done this? Who is responsible for this genocide in Ethiopia? You can't be straddling the fence. These is our enemies. We can easily identify There's their Peckerwood commander who they following right up the damn hill. This is actual footage. This is actual fact. So I don't want to hear no more chitter chatter with a little corner store mo who all all he want to do is spew rhetoric. You understand? I'm gonna put the I'm gonna nip it in the bud. You know, after all of this is said and done, you do the research. I'm not gonna go on with this because they not that special. They're not that big for me to have to do these many videos on it. But just in case my brothers and sisters needed a couple of more points that I could make to show them that these individuals were part of the traitorous cracker regime, Arab regime that was committing genocide on our people, here it is. Here's footage from the documentary, The Congo. You understand what I'm saying? Well, King Leopold of Belgium committed a genocide where he mass murdered 30 million of our peoples in the Congo. His 16,000 man army was these niggas right here with these fezes on their head. They had highly mechanized artillery when they knew that their brothers and sisters only had basic spears and bow and arrows. So they knew exactly what they was doing when they committed that genocide. Ask yourself, what is the, in the heart of a, a low-life, treacherous nigga to be able to shoot down women, babies, and defenseless men knowing that they can't protect themselves? So I put this documentary out there, and here you see our brothers who is discussing it, how they slaughtered our people how they mass murdered our people, and that they had no defense for the army, the, the highly mechanized artillery that they had. They knew that these Africans had no system of defense. So they knew exactly what they was doing. And since they had no mercy on them 30 million of our African brothers and sisters in the Congo, then you should have no mercy on them. So don't ride the fence. Continue to do your research. But this is actual documentation of these brothers in the Congo wearing the fans committing genocide. Now you're looking at a fans wearing traitor, whipping our brothers and sisters. Got his brother standing right there to observe, to put fear in him. Gather our brothers and sisters up so they could be instilled with fear. As they watch these old treacherous traitor, red fares wearing niggas beat our brothers and sisters in the cargo. They were the ones chopping off the arms. They was the ones that were uh, mutilating our, our ancestors. They were the ones, they would burn this tree sap and let it pull down on the, bo the bodies of our brothers and sisters to commit this genocide on our people in the Congo. Now what you about to witness it's how these red fans wearing traitorous niggas lining our brothers and sisters up for the Peckerwood so that he can murder three of them at a time. They did not want to waste bullets on one which they could kill three with at one time. Now here the niggas is, red fans wearing African want to be Moors, and they always talking about slavery, that slavery did not happen. That we're not just talking about the slaves that were brought to the Americas. We also talking about the